guys, this is Carrie Fullerton with Fullerton's Professional Organizing, and today I'm talking about a Tiffany Smith. She's on YouTube, and um, she doesn't talk about this particular subject on YouTube, but I believe um, she also has a website, but she talks about function versus aesthetic. Um, and she talks about function is the practical and useful, and the aesthetic is the beauty and satisfying. And she said when she organizes for clients, her goal is both. And my, the goal for me is the same. When I work with clients, I want it to function and to be aesthetically beautiful. Now, sometimes my clients don't um, have room for all the things that they want to keep. So the aesthetics is not quite as important to my clients uh, sometimes. Um, so all of my clients are different. Um, sometimes there's just not a r enough room for everything to fit in the space and um, a few more items need to be let go to keep the aesthetics part going. But as long as we can get it functioning and my clients are happy, then I am happy. But uh, I will admit I would like um, more things to be donated to people in that can use it um, than for my clients to have more things than they can possibly use even within a year or two years or three years. Um, Dana K. White says your container is your container. Your house is your container. Your bedroom is your container. Your closet is your container. And if those things are overflowing, um, you're not going to have function or aesthetics. But the function and aesthetics, uh, there are different, different clients have different, uh, different goals. So... As long as I can get it to function, I'm good, but I would love, but my goal is for both. Now, she says five questions. What is the pain point of, uh, the of you, the client? Problem. What is the problem? What is the worst, you know, the, the, the worst thing about, and what area is the most overwhelming? Um, who uses the space? how often, and the demographics and sustainability, which is, you know, how old is the client? How high is the client? Are they impaired? How easy is it to use and put back? Those are a lot of things that go into organizing with a client. Four keys, systems. Systems have to make sense for your family needs or whoever is using the space. Use containers to identify placement of items and avoid spillage. Some things are to avoid messes left behind by our items and some are just to make sure each item has a place and can be found in that place. Use labels to identify your items. Easy to access and return. When we organize for clients, we are attempting to make it easy to get to and easy to put back. She says four keys to making it look beautiful is first to declutter because if there's not enough room, then it's going to be crammed in there and it's not going to have a lot of the aesthetics. Um, but Designate a per permanent spot for everything. Containers that match look and look good together are more appealing aesthetically. Sort and store by category, type, color, style, etc. That will also make it more aesthetically appealing. 
Create systems for your lifestyle and your household. Running low. If some items are running low, have a system for your whole family to write it down on a whiteboard so that everyone's on the same page. Get um, the whole family involved in the project so the whole family can be involved in keeping the systems needed to keep organized. Now, I'm also, I'm going to review a little bit of what she says, and then I'm going to also talk about another organizer named Tracy Lynn on YouTube and how she believes in gradual decluttering for those that feel like decluttering is very overwhelming for them. And we're talking about extreme clutter. Um, but you will know when we talk about it, whether this is the system for you or not. And it's something that I haven't actually heard uh, organizers talk about. So we'll get to that in just a minute. But for now, we're going to finish up on Tiffany Smith and how she organizes for clients. Tiffany is going to get... Uh, Tiffany gives us the keys to creating a space that is functional for multiple users as well as beautiful and tips for how to engage your entire family along the way. Don't let too many pairs of shoes collect at the door. Limit it to one pair per person. These are some of her, her tips. And she has bought furniture that you open and throw shoes in so you don't even know that there are shoes there. Remember, when you're thinking of a function, you want to implement systems that work. So do things that you're going to be able to maintain. If it can't be maintained, then you need a new system. I usually try to work with a system for about a year, maybe only six months. If I can't maintain it, then I know I need to rework it and make it simpler. Uh, a functional space is practical and useful. It's easy to manage and maintain. It may not be pretty, but it works. Uh, an aesthetic space is designed to be beautiful and pleasing. Even though it is beautiful, it may not function well. The goal is to marry function and beauty together. Consider these five questions, and we already went over these, but this is kind of a little overview. <clears throat> What's your pain point? Who uses the space? How often will the space be used? What are the demographics of the users, you know, taking age, height, uh, impairments, and is it sustainable? To make a space functional, use containers to identify placement and avoid spills. Use labels to identify where things go. Make things easy to, ex to assess and easy to put back, access and put back. To make a space Aesthetically pleasing, declutter what you don't use. Give every item at home using matching or complementing containers and sort and store items by category. Using the example of a cluttered pantry that is hard to inventory, you can use clear containers to easily identify what you have. Use turntables for easier access to items. Label the containers so everyone is able to put things where they belong. To make a space functional, use containers to identify placement and avoid spills. Use labels to identify where things go. Make things easy to access and easy to put back. All right. Now, I want to talk to you about a great system. I have... Now, I've seen a little bit of this done, and this is the way I recommend uh, it being done for uh, you. And this is Tracy Lynn, 
and she has lots of tips on her YouTube channel on this subject, but she talks about decluttering your house gradually. Now, we've heard of decluttering your house, breaking it down into small bite-sized pieces, like one drawer, one shelf, one cabinet, you know, start with the uh, smallest space and work your way up. But, uh, and then her ideas, I usually implement at the end of a declutter and organization session to maintain it and keep it that way. So, um, what she says to do is she has three quick tips declutter to declutter in minutes. Use bins and baskets to hide clutter. Two, when it is full, that is your cue to empty them. Three, put your, put your things away all the way. Do not put it down, put it away. And that just means, let's just use laundry for an example. When you fold your laundry, do you tend to not after you fold it, you don't want to put it away. And so it just sits and sits and sits. She says, just do the job all the way. If you're going to come home and put your purse down, go ahead and put it on a hook. Uh, put your keys on the hook. You know, whatever the system you have already at home, um, you know, don't just take your shoes off at the door. Put it in a basket. Put it in a container. You know, put it all the way up. Uh, don't just put it down for later and to procrastinate. If you love something, keep it. Make room for the things you love by getting rid of the things you do not use or love. Now that is all organizers' motto. Now, gradual decluttering. Decluttering fast and furious does not work for everyone. Removing excess little by little at a time may be better. You clutter, your clutter did not happen overnight, so removing it will take some time and give yourself some grace. <clears throat> Uncover the clutter. Where is it? Three core steps. Remove all trash first. And when she talks about trash, she's just not talking about, you know, people just throwing potato chip bags everywhere, blah, blah, blah. It's like, you know, when you open the mail and you forget to throw away the empty envelope, you know, make, let's throw away those empty envelopes. Let's throw away those broken pens and broken pencils, uh, the dried out markers, all those things that ten, we just tend to not throw away right away and then they collect uh throw away all the that type of trash remove all your recycling and then put away all the keep items make sure everything has a home and a place to go use boxes or bags to declutter put boxes in every room now here's her gradual system put a donation box in every room then as you're cooking and you uh, put one item that you don't use in the box every time you see that donation box make sure you put one thing in it that you're ready to donate and she says this gradual process will be so easy and so effortless that every day you'll put one thing in that box that you're ready to let go of. In your uh, closet, you put on an outfit and you no longer like it or it no longer fits you well, throw it in the donation box, you know, and keep that in the back of your mind in every single room. Then when that box is full, you are going to put it on the front seat of your car and you're going to make sure the next time you go into town or use your car, you make a trip to the donation center or a lot of places have those little donation boxes that look like mailboxes and you can just toss your stuff in there or if you have a specific place that you want your donations to go i mean by all means take them there 
So she says, um, use boxes or bags to declutter, put box in every room, toss donations in these boxes uh, throughout your day. If you do not use it, let it go. Get the clutter gone. Next time you go into town, drop it off. Uh, you know, so remove trash, remove recycling. She has that. So let me do a little review here real quick. Tracy Lynn on YouTube teaches techniques of gradual decluttering, which is removing excess a little at a time, making it less frustrating and stressful. You know, this would work uh, for hoarders. If you identify yourself as a hoarder and it's very, very hard for you to do a big decluttering project or to let go of multiple items at once, this might work for you. Um, gradual decluttering, which is removing excess a little at a time, making it less frustrating and stressful. Once you fill a box or a bag, put it immediately into your car to be taken to a donation center. Moving boxes of donations from one room to another is not decluttering. It's just relocating. It took me a while to learn that decluttering all at once in fast and furious mode only makes things 10 times worse and the mess 10 times bigger. I truly feel that decluttering is easier when you take your time. Your, de your declutter didn't happen overnight. Be patient and realize removing it will take some time. More often than not, the clutter you actually need to deal with is buried under things that are not clutter. As you intentionally declutter, you will notice that you begin to look for things to get rid of. Another side effect of intentional decluttering is you will find yourself putting things away where they belong. Rather than seeing all your things as treasures, you begin to see them as tools to help you perform a task. Uh, those are all the items that you're keeping, I assume. Your home will have more room for the things that you do have that do have meaning to you. She says, take three core steps, and we've gone over this already, but let's do a little review. Decluttering. Remove the trash, you know, empty envelopes, dried pencils, I mean dried markers. Remove the recyclables and gather anything that needs to be put away in a basket. Then go put those things away. That's another good tip that I use. I use baskets to gather all the things that don't belong in a space so that I can go and put them up. Gather several boxes or bags from around your home. These will serve as visual donation box cues. Pick the rooms you want to declutter first. Put one of the boxes or bags in each of these rooms. Whenever you are in that room and you see a box or a bag, put at least one item inside. Do this every time. Now that may not work perfectly for a junk room that you just throw junk in and never go into. <laughs> if you never go into the room and it just c collects clutter, uh, then that might be a little bit harder. But for all the rooms that you use and you go into uh, often, that will work perfectly. You may have to take once the, the rest of your house is decluttered, you may have to take that junk room and uh, do a little extra weekend work on that. But again, the idea is still, you know, start with the trash in the room, start with the recyclables in that room, start with the things that you know you're ready to donate. Um, you can still do it little by little and bite size pieces but this gradual uh, decluttering is a lifestyle choice that will work for you for the rest of your life you will always be in the habit of letting things go on a daily basis one item that you don't like or don't use anymore 
All right, guys, I know this is going to help you, and I will see you and talk to you on the next podcast. Thanks for watching.